Hello and welcome to the Chapter 7 Workout Problem video. Let's go ahead and get started with Problem 1, Firms Investing. So in this problem, we have a firm that has a need to invest. It has an investment that it can make. Okay, So a firm is considering an investment that will earn 6% rate of return. If it were to borrow the money, it would have to pay 8% interest on the loan. So it's going to go borrow it from the bank or wherever, right? But it currently has the cash. So it will not need to borrow. Should the firm make the investment? So I have three options laid out here. One is we're going to use our own money and invest, right? Option B, we're going to borrow from the bank and then invest. And then option C is do not invest. So which is the correct one? Let's take a look, and it really, it really centers around the uh, the fact that's in over here in the blue uh, diagram that's laid out, right? So what we have here is we have uh, a project, right? It's at six percent. So this is our project. It's either you know we it's maybe we can uh, purchase a new machine and and produce something new at our at our company, and we will get a six percent return on buying that machine and running it. Maybe it's just an investment in, you know, we're gonna buy some something and then resell it. Whatever it is, it's 6%, right? So here's 8%. That represents maybe the, the interest, okay, percent from the bank or whoever we're gonna borrow from, right? Does it make sense to borrow 8% money to make 6%? Uh, no, right? So that does not, make sense. So that's option B. Option B does not make sense. Use our own money to invest. Well, so that's that's something that we have, right? So we have some money, we can invest it and make 6%. That actually sounds like a pretty good idea until we think of this. Right now, the bank is charging 8%. So they're expecting that the going rate of interest or the price of money, right? The price of money is the rate of interest charge or the rate of return. That's the price of money. So the bank is expecting 8% return, okay? So if, if we consider that the going market rate for the price of money, then should we take our own money? Right here, we have our money right here, right? Should we take our own money and put it into a 6% investment? And the answer is no, we should not. 6% is below the threshold that the market of the market price, right? Would we take some product that we have and sell it for below market price? No, of course we wouldn't. And our money is the same way. So really the option C is the option that makes the most sense until we can find an 8% investment that is. All right, problem two. We're considering the following data, right? And we were saying, what is the marginal gain in output from increasing the number of barbers from four? So here's our barbers right here. There's four barbers to five. Okay, so we're doing this increase right here. And then we're gonna say, and from five to six. So this increase right here. So that's, those are the two points this is number one, this is number two, right? These are the two points that we're con con gonna consider. So the marginal gain. And uh, then, then in the end, we're also gonna say, does it continue uh, the pattern of diminishing marginal returns? So, so the marginal gain, what we're talking about here is if we add additional labor, how many additional units can we output or produce, okay? So as we look at these increases, we're gonna look across at the matching increases in the quantity that we're able to have for output. So we have one here, right? Four to five is one, five to six is also one. So I, I wrote two, because that was Oshman two, but we'll go ahead and write a one here. Right, so that's our increase in labor each time we add an additional barber. Let's see what our increase in quantity is. So we have 72 to 80, that's an increase in eight. We have 80 to 84, that's an increase of four. So as we add additional barbers, our gain in output 
is diminishing. So our marginal gain here, the, the way it works is we take our uh, quantity, our change in quantity, okay, change in quantity divided by, or, or output, divided by the change in our input. In this case, it's labor. So we'll say labor. So with this one, it's eight, right, divided by one. Okay, so our, our marginal gain for the first move is eight. And then the second one, it's going to be four divided by one, right? So our marginal gain for the second one is going to be four. And then the question is, does it continue the pattern of diminishing marginal returns? And the answer is yes, it does. Okay, so here's problem three. This is a graph extension. So we're gonna come up with additional data. We're gonna calculate some uh, data points here. Okay, so what it asks us to do is, it says compute the average total cost, average variable cost, and marginal cost of producing 70 and 72 haircuts. Draw the graph of the three curves between 70 and 72. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that in our second one. We're gonna draw the graph here as we, as we flip over. But let's talk about these different things we're supposed to calculate. So first, average total cost. Okay, so our average total cost is going to equal our total cost divided by our total quantity, right? Our total quantity produced. So for the very first one, our average total cost here is going to be our 400 divided by our 60, okay, which gives us uh, $6.67. These, as we do averages and margins, really what we're looking at here is a uh, per unit cost, right? So we're averaging it out per unit. So then, then our next one, our average total cost here for um, 72, right? Quantity of 72 is we're taking our 480 and dividing it by 72, and we get the same thing. The average total cost is remaining the same here between these two points. Now our average variable cost, we're gonna take a look at that. So here's our AVC, and so with this one, we're taking our total average cost, right? Which is, which is uh, whoops, not, not average, variable. Okay, total variable cost, sorry. So right here, right, total vari variable cost is in, in this column. And then we're gonna divide that by our quantity, okay, produced at that level. So the very first one here is we got our 240, which is our variable cost, and we're gonna divide it by 60. It gives us four. Okay, the next one we're gonna take this 320, and we're gonna divide it by 72. It gives us 4.44 slight increase there okay so now the next one is our marginal cost okay so marginal cost is a little different than these these first two that we've done so what we want to do here is we're looking at the changes or the margins right so here's our delta right delta uh, means a change in okay so our change in our total cost divided by the change in the quantity or the output, right? And so for the very first one, it's gonna be, uh, for, as we move from 40 to 60, right? So that change right there is 80. That's the change in total cost. And then we're moving from 40 to 60. So the change there is 20. So it's 80 divided by 20, which is four. And now for the next move, we're gonna move from 60 to 72, right? So these calculations, are done in the margins or between moves, right? So margins are, as we go from row to row, we're gonna be changing it. Uh, as we do averages, we're gonna stay in the same row, right? We're gonna go, we're gonna get the right columns and do our calculations. Margins, we're going from, from one row to the next. So like for example, the total cost here, what's our change in total cost? It's gonna be 80, 400 to 480. So our change in total cost is 80. And then we're gonna have our change in quantity. In this case, it is, uh, it's gonna be 12. 12, right? 60 to 72, which will be a change of 12. So it'll be 80 divided by 12, and that's gonna be 6.67. And that's our calculations.
Okay, this is going to be important. So this is all foundational stuff we're doing in this chapter. Okay, and so as we get into the types of markets, uh, like our monopolies, our perfect competitions, our oligopolies, okay, all, the, all of these, we're going to be using these concepts to answer some important questions and, and have some insights into markets and transactions. So that's why we're doing all this calculation stuff up front so we can know what it is. So when we look at the, con the theory behind it, we can do the calculations easily. Okay, so here's our next one. This is the problem three continued. So what we're supposed to do here is we're supposed to graph, we are supposed to graph these points right here, right? All these points right here on uh, the graph here. And so what we have is we have our price over here Okay, and we're gonna be everywhere from, let's say, this is $2, $8. Let's say, let's say that's what the price is. Okay, so these are in dollars. And then over here, we're gonna be doing our quantity. Okay, so when our quantity is gonna range here, we're really just gonna go in between uh, 60, whoops, 60 and 72. Okay, so that's really all we're gonna graph. And so at 60, let's do average total cost here. Um, at 60, our average total cost is 6.67. Okay, so that's gonna be our amount. And then at 72, our average total cost is gonna be the same. Okay, so this, is, this right here is average total cost. All right, and typically it's gonna be a U shape, right? So as we get it even further out with different data points, uh, average total cost is gonna be a U shape. Average variable cost, typically is below average total cost, right? Because average total cost has the fixed cost component in it. So it's definitely gonna be um, above average variable cost. So average variable cost at 60 is gonna be four, and then at uh, 72, it's gonna be 4.44, so it's gonna be somewhere up here, so it's gonna be slightly rising, right? So that's gonna be our AVC. And then our marginal cost is going to go, uh, let's see. So really it's gonna be in between is where we're gonna be at. Uh, margins, in the margins. So right here, it's in between, uh, it was, I think it was 40 and 60, right? So 40 is gonna be on here. So in between 40 and 60, the marginal cost is four, right here, right? And in between 72 and, or 60 and 72, the marginal cost is going to be 6.67, so it's gonna be right here, right on this line, right? Because those were, that's about where we were. And then it's gonna go up this direction, which that's what we would expect from marginal cost because marginal cost is going to be more vertical. It's gonna go, it's gonna slant upwards, okay? Away from the origin is what marginal cost is gonna do. Okay, so that's problem three. Now we're gonna go on to problem four. So problem four, we're talking about production methods, okay? And so really the idea is we're gonna be looking at the lowest cost method for our production methods, assuming that all of the methods are giving us the same output, right? So that's kind of the assumption that we're taking here is all these different methods, whether they use a certain amount of labor or a certain amount of capital, then they're gonna be giving us all the same um, outputs, okay? And so we can have different mixes. And so we're gonna, we've set this table up. I've set this table up here to say, okay, these are the three methods. They're all gonna have a different mix of labor and capital. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, the labor is, uh, for method one, is there, we're gonna use 50 units, whatever that is, right? 50 people, 50 hours, 50 whatever. The price of labor is gonna be $100. And then the labor cost is the multiple, those two multiplied, right? So it's 5,000 altogether. Capital is gonna be the same way. So we're gonna have a certain amount of units of capital, whatever that means, right? Price of capital is $400 per unit, multiply them out, and that's our cost of capital. Add the labor cost and the cost of capital together, and that'll give us our total cost of 9,000. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for all three methods. So I'm gonna walk through here and do it all. We see the different mix, right? So we have less labor, more capital in method two, 
And then in method three, we have even less labor and even more capital. And we see our best option in this case is going to be uh, method one, right? Right here, this is our lowest cost option. May not, may not always be the case. It depends on how in, uh, expensive labor is, right? Which that's our next, uh, this is our next scenario here. Labor actually doubles in price. Okay. Oh, darn it. I got the wrong numbers. So labor, this is a triple in price even, right? The, the answer is still the same, even if we double or triple. So in the table, I actually went and tripled it. Okay, so I did 300 instead of 200. You're supposed to put 200 here. So that was my error. But this even gives us an example of what it would be like if we tripled labor. And because the price of labor is so much uh, less expensive, right? The price of capital is so much more expensive than labor, uh, relatively speaking. Really, the, the mixes that we have here are going to... Uh, if, if we have a capital intensive project, it's gonna be higher cost. So in this case, uh, our total cost for uh, the very first one, method one is still just barely, you know, it's getting narrower, but it's still the lowest cost. And if you were to do it with uh, the price of labor of being 200, the number is gonna be different. The result is still gonna be the same. All right, hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a, con uh, a call or an email and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Have a good day.